About five years ago, I stopped taking creatine entirely. I went cold turkey on it. Why did I stop taking it? Why have I started taking it again after five years? How does it work? Does it work? Is it safe? And most importantly, is it gonna make you bold? That's definitely ranked above safety if you're a lad. Like, I'd rather die young than go bold young. Before we can answer those questions, let's go over Biology 101, a little bit of a recap on how creatine works to kind of jog your memory. All cells need energy to function. We are made up of cells, so we need energy to function. Our cells need energy to function. Energy is stored in a form called ATP. Creatine regenerates or rephosphorylates ADP into ATP. When you exercise, your body uses more energy. Where does that energy come from? ATP. So we've got those fresh ATP molecules again, all happy and together, ready to get used and broken down into energy. If we're doing things like weight training, we're obviously gonna be using a lot of energy, using a lot of ATP. So that needs to be regenerated quickly and efficiently by ensuring that we have enough, we can then get more energy from the workouts. And that in turn is indirectly gonna mean that we can push harder, we have more endurance, we're gonna be able to get stronger, we're gonna get bigger because we can go further and we can perform better in the gym. Contrary to the belief of mums all over the world, Creatine is not a steroid. It's completely natural. It is a supplement that is found commonly in foods, particularly beef. And uh, we actually have about 100 grams of it in our body naturally before you've ever even taken creatine that just accumulates from eating food. Interestingly enough as well, this is something I found out recently, which is partially one of the reasons that pushed me over the edge into taking it again, that I really want to take it, was that... It's also nootropic. Around 20% of our ATP is actually used by our brain. If we're doing like incredibly hard or complex mental tasks or focusing, then we're gonna use more. So that means that by taking creatine, we're actually also gonna be able to replenish or assist in the regeneration of ATP or generate more energy in our brains as well as our muscles, which means that it's gonna have cognitive enhancing effects. There's a study that shows taking five grams of creatine daily had a 20% improvement on an IQ test when it is repeated versus groups that may be deficient in creatine. Not only does it make you absolutely jacked and get 100 girls on the beach, it also improves cognitive ability as well. Obviously, there's many different types of creatine. What kind of creatine should you buy? Buy creatine monohydrate. If you suffer with digestive issues, if it does give you an upset stomach from taking too much, then maybe take less or consider something like micronized, but creatine monohydrate is all you need. Like all these fancy like creatine variants are just like a marketing sham and a scam to make money. It's not really gonna matter when you take it, but research shows that the best time to take it is with a meal containing carbs and proteins for better absorption, preferably after you work out. There's two main ways to take creatine. Number one is you might have heard of going through a loading phase where you take around 15 to 20 grams for a week or two weeks and you basically load up on creatine so your tissues are saturated with creatine and then you pull back to five grams a day. Or you can just start by taking three to five grams a day and just stay consistently doing that. I would say that they are both going to have the exact same outcome. The only difference is if you load and take 15 to 20 grams, it might give you a bit of an upset stomach and it will also mean that you'll get to that saturated creatine tissues faster but it's just going to cost you more money to get to that point if that makes sense because ultimately you're going to get to the same place after a couple of weeks of creatine personally i just take five grams a day every single day simple easy after a workout with a meal side effects is a pretty common one that you might have heard of water retention or water weight first and foremost this shouldn't be an issue um, because creatine the majority of creatine is going to be intramuscular water so it's going to make our muscles look bigger and it's going to make our muscles look fuller it's not like you're going to spill over and look incredibly watery and all like blown up and puffy. It's a bit of a myth. So water weight or weight increase from water weight is one of them. Weight increase or weight gain from actually gaining muscle could be another one as well, an indirect one. Other than that, there is no evidence to suggest it is gonna fuck you up. So you're good. Hair loss and creatine, this is my take on it. And uh, I stopped taking creatine because of this like sole fact, because of the worry it was gonna make me go bold or it's making me go bold. But I don't think you need to be concerned about it. So there's a paper that was published and it's looking at rugby players and it put rugby rugby players on creatine. It looked at their DHT levels before and after they took the creatine and found that DHT levels had increased whilst they were on creatine. So it's a type of testosterone that is associated with hair loss, causing miniaturization of your hair follicles. If you've got high DHT, if you're prone to hair loss, having high DHT can cause your hair follicles to miniaturize and fall out and you basically go bold and your life is over and everything's horrible. There's a couple of issues with this paper. Number one is that the results have never been replicated beyond this one study, which is a massive red flag. Like just because it's published doesn't mean it's good and you should listen to it. Number two is that we are assuming that that increase in DHT 
in that group is going to result in hair loss. Just because something causes an elevation in DHT, you can't assume that it's going to result in hair loss. So I was wrong in the sense that I read that and was like, oh no, more DHT equals our hair's going to fall out when it's so much more complicated than that. To add to the paper as well, they saw an increase in DHT in the rugby players, but they also saw, I think there's no increase in free testosterone, which makes absolutely no sense. Long story short, the paper is trash. Creatine is the last of your problems taking it if you're worried about hair loss. If you are worried about hair loss, uh, such as me, take things, start a protocol, get something in place to stop the hair loss because creatine is not going to be a contributing factor at all or a large contributing factor in any way whatsoever. But yeah, anyway, jumping back on cycle, going to get absolutely massive, going to get absolutely huge. My arms have gained like three inches already. Um, that is why I'm taking creatine. It's not going to make me bold. Uh, my own genetics are going to do that, but we are fighting against it. Uh, check out my other hair loss videos if you haven't already. Links in the bio for hair loss stuff. Peace out. I love the bits. Drop the video a like. Drop the video a comment if you disagree or agree with me. What are your thoughts on creatine? Um, peace out. I love the bits. Thank you. Good night.